Hey everyone, what's up? Matt here from SoundSwitch. And in this tutorial video, we're going to be showing you everything about moving heads and moving effects, as well as attribute cues. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to explain how to control moving heads using the position cues and movement effects. And we'll show you how to change things like gobos and prism effects using the attribute cues. SoundSwitch breaks control channels up into two groups, standard attributes and non-standard attributes. The standard attributes include intensity, color, strobe, and pan and tilt. And these are controlled using the control tracks in SoundSwitch. All other attributes, such as gobo, prism, controls for lasers, and smoke machines, are all handled in the attribute cue feature. So let's jump into edit mode and show you how you can use these two different features. So here we're in edit mode and I've already set up my fixtures. In the DMX map, you can see that I have my gig bar move, my Panther LEDs, and my top right and top left wash lights. On the left hand side, we have a wash light and a moving head, the same on the right, and our gig bar is set up in the middle. So let's start by opening an auto loop and getting some playback on our lights. Here you can see in the main track that there is four different control tracks. We have the intensity track, the color track, the strobe track, and the movement track. Let's start with the intensity track. This is the simplest and easiest to control. Here I will delete a couple of nodes and I will create a graph. When I move this graph up and down, the intensity of the light is dimmed. To add a node, simply select to create a new node and then you can start to draw in different shapes. If you like, you can also use the preset intensity controls. First, make a selection, select one of the intensity effects. I'm going to select a smooth pulse and I'll double click to apply it. I'll choose the parameters and the intensity, and I'll press OK. If I apply that effect again, and I make changes to the controls, I can reduce the intensity and increase the speed at which the pulses are placed. I can then start to change the color. Here, I can edit a color region and change the transition from one color to the next. Or I can make a selection Select to choose a standard color and press blue. If I would like to turn the strobe for this particular light on, again, I can make a selection, press the strobe icon here. So if I set this at zero at the start, the start of the selection will be at zero and the end of the selection will be at 90%. Now, if I make a selection and just make my intensity to be a flat line, and if we press play, we'll see that the strobe will intensify from left to right. I can delete that strobe track by right clicking and selecting delete. And again, you can also use the right click menu to apply effects, apply color, color transition, apply strobe or apply movement effect. The bottom track is used for the positions. Now the little position cues that you see here in the movement track correlate to the positions here on the left hand side. If I would like my lights to point to the disco ball, I can open a disco ball position. I can select my movers and I can move them around. I can select some movers by using command or shift selection. So now I'm moving the lights on the gig bar move, or I can select them all and move all of the lights together. Depending on how your lights are orientated, here we have two lights that are mounted sideways, and we also have lights that are mounted facing down, 
you'll use a different corner of that X and Y grid. If I want my lights to not go backwards and face the wall, when I move these, I simply want to move these out away from the wall and out towards the DJ booth. Now, because the Panthers are mounted sideways, we will be using a different corner of the graph. So again, when you set your positions, move your lights outward away from the wall that's behind you, if that's how your lights are set up, and your lights will not go backwards. I can then select a different position and I can adjust this. I want to go through and do this for all of the default positions. If you want to create a new position, simply select the plus icon here and you'll get a new position listed at the bottom. You can rename the position by double clicking Matt's new position. And then I can set my pan and tilt values. Again, I can select them both and move the lights all together, or I can make a selection and move them one at a time. As soon as I press apply, all of the position cues in the movement track will automatically update. This means you don't have to go through and re-script all of your tracks or your auto loops. If you would like to add a movement effect, you can clear the movement track by making a selection and pressing Command and Delete, and then right click and apply a movement effect. This will apply a default preset, such as a figure eight or a circle, and you can adjust the speed at the beginning and the end of the selection. You can also place a position cue so that the lights will move around that position in that shape. So here my lights are pointing forward and they're moving in a figure eight shape. Now, what if I want to change the gobos or the prism or any other effect on the light? This is handled in the attribute cues feature. Attribute cues are listed here on the left hand side. And again, it's the same as the position cues, but if you double click, you can select to change the gobo. If you select the gig bar move, you can also choose the derby rotation as well as the laser and other settings of the lights. Again, once you apply this, the attribute cue flags in the tracks will automatically update and your lights will now have their new settings. If you're using lasers, attribute cues are used to control all of the feature of the laser, including the pattern, size, shape, and movement. If you're using a smoke machine, you can use the attribute cues to turn the smoke machine on and off. You can also create different effects using the fixture tracks. In this particular fixture track, I can change the color of my moving head by overriding what's happening in the main track. If I make a selection, right click and apply a color, I can now change the color of just one of my moving heads. If I make that selection and copy and paste it, I can then paste that onto my other Panther by either setting the playhead and pressing Control or Command V, or by making a selection and pressing Control V. I can also stretch that color track out. And now I have different colors on both of my movers to the rest of the lights that I have. Now let's say I want my two movers on the outside to do a circle pattern while I want my middle movers or the movers on my gig bar to do a figure eight. I can start by overriding the panthers and creating a position override. I can then apply a movement effect to this one and I'll make these do a circle. I can then copy and paste that onto my other panther and then in the main track, I can use this to create the figure eight effect for the movers on the gig bar. This is because the effect placed on the Panthers track are overriding what's happening in the main track. And the gig bar is following the main track. So here I'll press play and we'll see how that looks. So here I have my lights on the outside doing a circle with the gig bar mover lights doing a figure eight. 
Perfect. Now let's look at some of the more advanced position effects. What we'll first do is we'll filter our workspace and we'll filter out all of our RGB fixtures and just show our movers. So here we can see our panther, our mover left and our mover right, as well as the panther in the right hand group. So I'll make a selection over all of these fixtures by holding Command or Control and selecting the fixture tracks. And then I'll apply a random position effect. And I'll space the position cues every two bars. Soundswitch will now randomize the position cues that are placed on all of these fixtures. Let's do the same thing with the change and hold effect, but this time we'll have the beat spacing every one bar. Here you can see that we have a down position that then changes to my new position. And there's a very short change between these two position cues. If we press play on this, we can see that the lights hold and then change quickly, and then hold and then change quickly again. And that's the change in hold effect. I'll make the same selection again but this time I'll choose to apply a position chase effect. Here I'll choose a stage left position, then a stage right position, and then a dance floor position. And I'll space these every half bar. Here you can now see that there's an offset that's been applied to the different lights. If we press play, we can see that the lights will change and move to a different position with an offset. This is a cool way to create a position chase. Let's say you're in performance mode and you want to apply a movement effect or position cue on the fly. You can do this by right clicking and selecting which movement effect you would like to apply and then turning the movement effect on. When the movement effect is toggled on, all of the lights will start moving to that movement effect. In this example, I've selected a circle, but I could change that to be a figure eight. And now the lights will all start moving in a figure eight shape. I can increase the movement size or decrease the movement size, as well as increase or decrease the movement rate. I can also layer a position override on top of that. Position overrides allow me to select a position on the fly and have my lights stay on that position. This will override whatever's happening in the auto loop or scripted track. Here I will choose my DJ booth position and my lights will point to that and then start moving in the effect that I have in the movement effect. I can toggle these off and go back to what's happening in the auto loop. So that's how you can use the position cues to control movement on your moving heads, and how you can use the attribute cues to control all of the different features on your light. If you have any questions about position cues or moving heads or attribute cues, please reach out in the comment section below or send an email to support at soundswitch.com. You can also join the user group on Facebook or send us a message on Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Thanks and we'll see you in another video.